I'm going to show you how to make real-time fur shaders in the games industry. We'll be rendering in Marmoset 4, but the same techniques can be used in Unreal Engine 5. It's an amazing effect that requires little to no effort, so no painting, no sculpting or no baking. And if you think that's impossible, make sure to watch till the end of the video. I'm going to take you step by step in Adobe Painter, and I guarantee you'll get something out of this video. Hi, I'm Vertis. I'm a games art director, character artist and university lecturer. Welcome to 3D Mutiny, where we turn people into industry professionals. If that's your journey, make Make sure you subscribe and like the video and let's get started. So looking at the shader looks quite um, complicated and deep, but fundamentally it is quite cheap because we're using multiple layers of geometry that have different textures on them. So what happens is it gives the illusion of depth when actually only using a couple of textures and a couple of pieces of geometry. So I can explain that a little bit deeper and show you how it's basically comprised of the technicals and how I would construct it from scratch. It's really cool because it only takes about 30 minutes or so and it's used in an industry. So for example, in Red Dead Redemption, if you've ever seen fur or shirling, it chances are they use the shell technique or any kind of animal, whether it's in Far Cry, which is slightly different or um, classically where it's from is like moss shaders in CryEngine from back in the days of Rise. So here's how it looks in Marmoset 4. Uh, the nice thing about this is we can use ray tracing so it's got some extra depth in there. There's no custom painting in there. It's not even using normal maps. We're just making use of alphas and opacities. How the geometry is working, if we look very closely, I've got a very simple decimated version here. If you're doing low poly, you'd obviously have some nicer geometry, but this is just for the showcasing. Um, and when we look deeper in the wireframe, there's actually four sets of geometry that are overlapping each other. So how that pertains to an actual character in ZBrush is uh, I do a block out like this under the assumption that I'm going to use that shader. I don't necessarily have to use the or bake the normal maps. I just want the geometry itself. So in this example, I decimated it, brought it over to Maya and unwrapped it. If we take a deep dive into the geometry and look at the UVs, which are going to be important for setting it up, um, we have a sheep skin base, which is like the base layer that has a certain amount of UVs in zero to one space. The first layer is uh, only doing the top left section. Uh, the second one is top right and you get the picture and the third is bottom left so you can build up layers and use one texture sheet so this is how it looks in substance painter uh, you might notice that it looks different than it does in marmoset and that's common for character artists so what we'll do is we'll use substance to preview the layers and paint it and it won't necessarily transfer perfectly over to our renderer so what we would have is we'd have our working progress on here and on other screen we basically save export the textures and see what effect it has in the real-time renderer so it's comparable but um, fundamentally we're going to be refining it in the renderer itself and changing and tweaking some values so first i'm going to show you how you set it up on some basic geometry i'm going to use uh, a new geosphere here so this geosphere could be the decimated version or it could be a low poly um, just to make sure what we've got to do first is unwrap it because as we're going to duplicate it, we want to save some time in that unwrap. So with your unwrap, um, just make sure it's nice and efficient and then we're going to start to insert them in different sides of the UV. So with everything that's contained in that layout, um, you might be used to the layout button which puts it into the zero and one space. If we shift and click the layout button, we get a couple of options. And the one we're interested in is the packing region. We can actually assign this to a section or a fourth of the UV. So I'm going to put the first layer, which is the one that we're unwrapping, and click top left. And when I click layout, it's going to put it perfectly, if you see in this one fourth section. So then what we move on to is we're going to duplicate it and create the next layer of shell. Might be an idea to just name this, maybe on uh, 01 or sort of like shell one. So from here, what we could do is we could press control D and that's going to duplicate to the second shell. Um, and it might be tempting to increase the size of this so we get the layered effect. But um, if you've got different shapes of geometry, something that's not perfectly uniform, we want to use a different method for moving the vertices. So how you do that is go to vertex mode and select all the second shell vertices. And then if we double click the move tool up here, we can actually change the axis orientation and change that to a normal. So it's going to look at the normal of the vertices and push it outwards. Um, so for on complex objects like this, it's going to adhere to um, like a shell effect. So just hold N and bring it out slightly. Press four for wireframe, and then you can just observe how thick you want the shells. 
you can come back and change how deep or far they go. It'll just depend on how it looks in the final render. It's totally something you can um, adjust later. So with uh, all those shells, I do a couple of them. So duplicate the second version. Obviously now we've got a third layer of shells. But the important thing to remember is that we have to adjust the UVs. So going back to the second shell, confirming that it's selected under shell two and go back to the UV toolcat. So shift click layout and this time we want to do top right and then do the same for the third one. It's going to be bottom left. So once that's done, I would just double check that you've got everything correct. So you could select them all and just make sure that they're all stacked in those three sections and also go through it by one by one. So shell one is confirmed top left, shell two is confirmed top right and shell three is confirmed bottom left. So coming into substance, I'm going to break it down into the uh, three layers. So we've got one, two and three here, each in their own folder, each with a base color and each with uh, a mask for both the folder and the layer. So we're going to create that from scratch just so you understand it more. But that's the, that's the basic outline. So each one of these requires a color map. So you can see it here and also requires an opacity map. And that's all we're going to be using so far. Um, if you don't have the opacity map, I'm going to show you how you can add it. Or if you already know how to add it, just skip ahead a little bit. So first you want to find texture set settings. If you can't find it, go up to windows and tick it on. And in here, we've got some channels that we need to add. So you might not have opacity activated. Just go to the plus button and then you're going to find opacity. Um, it's usually down here. I've already added it, but make sure it's under L8 and then you've got the option to activate it here. So now I'm going to show you how to create one of these units. First, you would create a folder. And this is our new folder and we can call it 01, which will be the first set of shells. If you right click and then add a black mask, we can then select a certain part of the UVs. So as this is the first one, we can just come into the, the UVs, press F3 to see the layout. And then in the top left, we can switch this to a fill mode. And under this section, it's going to select UVs. Make sure that this is also set to one. So it means it's going to fill it in in white. You can also alt click the little icon here and that means we can see what's happening. So I'm just going to highlight the first set of UVs for the first section. Now if I come back and click off, you can see that that's been filled in. So next thing you want to do is add a fill layer. So adding a fill layer and then just make sure that that's dragged within that folder. So just double check it's in there. I'll also call that 01 uh, just so I know it's the first layer. You could potentially even color it as well. With this layer, we're only interested in color itself and an OP, which is opacity. So these two, you can choose a base color. The base color is usually going to be quite dark uh, to indicate that it's nice and deep and sort of like not receiving light. And also we want the opacity to be set as one. And then we're going to add a mask onto it later. So that's already set. I can come and right click here and I'm also going to add a black mask to our fill layer that we created. And within that mask, just make sure it's selected uh, over here. I can right click and I can also add a fill layer to the mask. So with the mask selected and also the fill selected, get given the gray cell option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the assets shelves and I'm just going to type in fractal sum into uh, this section here, the procedurals. So I like to use fractal sum three, just drag it into the gray scale and then we can get rid of this. Now to observe, we've obviously got the, the mask that's presented here. And also we've got given balance and contrast. And another one is important is going to be the scale. So how much it's basically tiling. So first I'd set how much you want this uh, fur to tile at a distance. I think that's going to look fairly decent. And then the balance is going to change both the opacity and the color that we have on the, on the base fill. So if I click the, the mesh here, you're going to see what effect that has. So if I come here, select the fractal sum, change the balance. It's basically changing how um, how much it's filling in. So the first layer is going to be quite thick. So is it going to indicate the base of the fur? And if you want to preview that a little bit better, sometimes what I like to do is turn the base color red uh, and then preview and see what that looks like first. And then when I'm happy with it, I'll then change it back to its original brown color. So for this example, um, I'm going to set it around around there for the base. Once I'm happy with it, I would then come back to the base color and then just change this to a low value brown. So you're looking at the 0.3 range. So once you've got that set up, that's the asset that we're going to be duplicating. And I'm going to show you how you can build that up.
So bringing back our example as a showcase, we've got the first layer that we set out. Uh, it's basically a brown color with opacity of one. In the mask, we've got our fractal sum. And if we click on the fractal sum, we can see we've got a value or a balance of 0 0.59. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna write this down. Cool, so I've written that down and just observe how that's looking. You can still see the base geometry but it's the first layer that's sort of giving our uh, base of our fur. And with the second one, obviously you can duplicate this entire folder. Just make sure that in that folder, the second set of UVs are selected, I've, otherwise it won't work. So in that folder, we have the same thing. So we've got the base color. This time it's a little bit lighter. So the value here is sort of like a mid range. And with our mask, if we click the mask, go to the fill that's in the mask, and then with the balance, we can see it's a little bit smaller, so 0 0.51. I'm also going to write that down. Cool, so now we've got the second layer. You can see the, the effect that's happening. It's a tiny bit smaller than the original, and it's giving that illusion of depth, depending on how far we pushed out that geometry. I think you can see it best sort of around the top here with the layer one and the layer two. Um, and now you can sort of like getting the pattern here. I'm just going to bring the third one in. And this time you can see if I turn it off and on, it's very, very minor but it's indicating sort of like the peaks of the fur. Um, so same again, just make sure that that is selected on our UVs at the bottom left. So we've got one, two, and three, that's in the folder. And then on the base material itself, our base color is slightly brighter this time. Obviously you tweak it to see how it would look in, in something like Marmoset. And our procedural balance has changed. This time it's very, very thin. So it's a 0 0.34. And what I've done here, I've just basically put high value, medium value, and low value to indicate the color. So now that that's done, what we can do is export our texture sheet. So if we look at the UVs and what's happened here, we've got um, our colors, which are obviously varying. And we've also got our opacity, which has different levels. And that's going to get exported as one texture and can be applied to all the parts of the geometry. So if I press Control, Shift and E, that's going to bring up the settings here. And what we're going to use is just a basic PBR. So open output template, scroll down slightly, and we're going to find PBR metallic roughness. And also make sure that you've only got the asset that you've got um, exporting here, which is our sheet fur. Um, Find a location for that, so output directory, I'm just gonna put it on desktop. You also wanna make sure that we're in Targa and eight bits plus, plus dithering, which is gonna be interesting. You can change the size of it. Um, I'd put it at 4K just because there's a lot of details there that we need to extract. And then click export. So now we're in my set four, I'm just gonna add a new material so we can show you how to break it up from scratch. So pressing this plus button up here, create new material going to rename it fur. In the top right here, we can see we've got our three layers just to confirm that those are in. And I'm going to drag this material and put them on all three of them because they're sharing the same texture material. So with this setup, we're only using the albedo and the opacity. So under the albedo section, we're going to click this map and then navigate to the texture that we exported. You can potentially do a normal map if you want, but it's not super required. Then under transparency, I'm gonna select dither. And then with dither, we're gonna make use of the albedo alpha. So what it's doing is it's looking at the base color from the PBR metal roughness export, and it's using the map within there. If that sounds a bit too complicated or it's not working, you can also just extract the albedo separately and then insert it as a map like we did with the top one. As this is educational, I'm just gonna show you how that's sort of like compressed. So under the export settings of PBR metallic roughness, uh, what you can see is we have inserted in the slot RGB, our base color, and then we also have another channel called an alpha channel. And what we've done is we've attached our opacity layer into that channel. So if you're more interested in that, look at texture compressions, but it's a bit outside of this scope. So by just adding those two, or well, all we've really done is added an albedo map and then ticked a button to use albedo alpha. And it seems that it has just auto generated this sort of like depth. Obviously you can change the roughness. So fur isn't going to be that shiny. It's going to be a very rough and coarse uh, object. So you want to set that really high. Um, you could also play around with some different um, details in, in Marmoset. Maybe there's some micro surface that might give a cool effect, like some haze, but you can just keep it like this if you want. Um, 
What you could also do if you want to make it a bit more complicated, you could duplicate these materials and then you could apply them to individual layers of the geometry and then you could give those a different color. So for example, I could duplicate this number for, for number two and let's for example put it on the uh, middle piece of geometry. So that's now assigned. What I can do is with that fur two is just change the color and you can see now the middle section is red and that's quite cool because it demonstrates how that's sort of built up so if i select the base layer i can turn that into blue and now you can see that the how the um the parallaxing is working we've got the tips that are blue the midsection that's sort of red um, and then obviously our base is our standard color if you want a bit of extra depth out of this um just come under renderer and then we're also going to tick use ray tracing if your graphics card has ray tracing, it can sort of survive that. Uh, it gives it a nice depth. So if you're taking a portfolio piece, it looks quite good, um, but it's it's not required. So if you look at Marmoset 3, where this was originally done, it completely has the same effect and it doesn't even have ray tracing. Um, and under normal game circumstances, we try and aim for something that doesn't use ray tracing just for the common player. Okay, so in summary, and just so you see the full workflow, you create something maybe in ZBrush and you indicate that you want that to be a fur shader. For example, this piece of geometry, you can export that. In this example, I did it as a decimation. You might wanna do a retopology and I've got videos on that if you're interested. Once we've brought that geometry into a 3D software, we then use the push technique to make additional shells, so duplicating it, and then also double checking that we have moved the UVs to separate parts of the UV island or the UV zero to one space, so it can be received on one texture. We then created one folder, which is, obtains our base color and opacity map. And in that folder, it was assigned to a certain part of the UV duplicated that three times and then gave them different values in the balance and also the value. So from 0 0.59 to 0 0.34, you'd have to adjust it depending on how it looks in yours. We then exported that entire texture with the opacity attached to the albedo channel. Uh, we then applied it to just a basic material in Marmoset and then made sure that we applied it to the correct geometry. So each individual layer um, making sure translucency was set to dither and also that we had checked albedo alpha. And then also if you wanted to take it a little bit further, obviously you could duplicate each one of those materials and assign it to a different part of the shell to give it a different effect. So from there, I would go in, adjust the lighting, maybe insert it so it, it represents quite well. This is a very basic scene, um, but for a very quick and easy process, we get a, a nice uh, cheap depth. Now. There's probably a bit of cost to this. So there's something called um, overdraw that could potentially be a thing, but it's not too expensive in comparison to normal hair shading. Um, and if you're in Marmoset, you're only really creating something for a render. So it doesn't matter too much. So there is a very effective and complicated looking shader, which fundamentally doesn't take too long. Um, if you got value out of the video and, and discovered something new that you might use on a future project, uh, hit like if you appreciated it. Subscribe if you're interested in more videos. I've got loads of more videos to come based on these sorts of topics. And also join the Discord where we discuss the videos and also our things in the games industry. And also for you guys to suggest videos that you might want to see. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you around.